Jim Purcell, who's a retired attorney and has been doing volunteer attorney work in the area for over 10 years. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, I'm here today actually representing all of the attorneys in the Midshore that volunteer their time with Midshore Pro Bono. Uh, I primarily do their clinics here in Queen Anne's County, uh, both elder law clinics and civil clinics. Um, the clinic in Queen Anne's County is the third Wednesday of every month at the Kramer Center in uh, Centerville, uh, usually from noon to two or three, depending on how many people come in. Um, so if you want to uh, have a session with an attorney at any of the clinics, you can call into Midshore Pro Bono. You'll probably talk to Kim and she'll set up an appointment for you. And typically the way it works is if you're interested in advanced directives, and Sharon did a really nice job of covering advanced directives for health care. Uh, we also do advanced directives for financial matters uh, as well as simple wills. So. Uh, Kim will send you a questionnaire and ask you to fill that out. And when you come into the clinic, you bring that with you and we review that and we start the process of um, working on your advanced directives. Um, we'll talk about advanced directives. We'll uh, ask you questions and make sure you're, you're doing what you want to do and what you want to do is legal. Uh, and then typically after that first uh, clinic meeting, what will happen is we'll send your questionnaire and any notes the attorney there makes uh, back to Kim and then she sends those out to other volunteer attorneys who will actually draft the documents. And then once the attorney has done that, uh, they'll contact you and either have you come in or meet you somewhere uh, to execute the documents, have them witnessed and notarized if, uh, if the document needs to be notarized. Um, so that's pretty much the way that goes. In addition, if you have any other legal questions um, relating to elder care or any other legal questions really while you're at the clinic, um, you, can, you can ask and, and we'll do our best to set you in the right direction. So I think I'll leave it at that and uh, answer any other questions more, more detailed that may come up during the question and answer period. only access your uh, programs if you qualify. Is that correct? You have to have a certain income level? Okay. <laughs> so you, you can come into the civil clinics uh, or the elder law clinics whether you qualify financially or not. Uh, if we screen you and you're going to need an attorney's time to accomplish what you want, then you will need to, to qualify financially. If you have a will that was written, let's say, 10, 15 years ago, and you wish to make a codicil to this will, do you have to have it written up by an attorney? You don't or have to, but it does have to be executed in the same manner as, as required by Maryland law, which is two witnesses. Right, and notarized? It doesn't have to be notarized. The only thing that really has to be notarized in the, in the uh, advanced directives or, or will area is uh, the uh, power of attorney for finances. That has to be notarized. Yes. He had the most. He had the uh, a medical directive. He had the power of attorney. All that stuff. I'd like to hear a little bit about the other person, the caregiver. How does yes. each of you deal with the caregiver person? I'll take a little different tack to this. Um, when you come into one of the clinics, um, even though it's a brief consultation with the attorney, there is an attorney-client relationship established. And that means that what you talk about is confidential. Um, there is a lot of elder abuse. Uh, I know that's difficult to think about, but you, we see a lot of it out there. So typically, if someone comes in with a family member or a friend, and uh, I get any hint during the interview that there's any coercion going on, <clears throat> I'll typically ask the person that is accompanying the client to step out and let me have a conversation, a confidential conversation with the client. So that's the way we handle that. Um, 
a couple other things I wanted to add um, about the advanced directives. Uh, you really don't need an attorney to do these, although I think it's always a good idea to have an attorney review it if you're trying to do it on your own. If you do want to do it on your own, you can go to the Attorney General's website and uh, advanced directives for health care, uh, finance, and the most are all on there. And they come with a really detailed set of instructions. So you can do those yourself if you want to. Um, the other thing uh, I wanted to mention has slipped my mind. Oh, the most. Uh, the most is fairly new in Maryland. And it's a um, particularly powerful document because, in essence, it covers a lot of the same ground as a living will does, which is part of the advanced directive for health care. But when you do this with the doctor and the doctor signs it, it becomes a medical order. So it travels with you and you have a lot better chance of other physicians, other than the one that did the most, of uh, adhering to those instructions. Uh, the other uh, real benefit of the most is that in Maryland, uh, emergency medical personnel, if they don't have directions otherwise, are bound to resuscitate you. If you don't want to be resuscitated um, and you go down in your home, let's say, and the emergency personnel show up, they don't have any way of knowing necessarily if you've got an advanced directive or a living will that says don't resuscitate me. But if you do a most and you have a copy of that um, available to them, and I think the, the common thought now is post on your refrigerator. Um, that's, they will look there, and if they see it and you don't want to be resuscitated, they will follow that order.